Welcome to another edition of Dungeons and Social Distancing with Nerdarchy. Today we're going back into Mythic Odysseys of Theros, this time with monsters. Welcome to Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Dave, and as usual I'm hanging out with this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. If you're looking for more D&D videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep them flowing through your feed. And... We want to make sure you stomp all over that notification bell so you don't miss a single Nerdarchy video. Before we jump into this video, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Campfire Technologies. It's an awesome world building and authoring tool. It's software that is going to allow you to keep track of your NPCs, your, all your characters, your world, and your timelines, your encyclopedias. You can build all that over there and so much more. You can import the maps from your world. It's going to keep you organized and your content just flowing in an easy and intuitive way. Uh, if you're as disorganized as Nerdarchy, where we've got things over here and things over there, uh, you know, it's a really great tool that really helps you keep you organized. It gives you different prompts. It gives you things to, to really keep your campaign world flowing. However you want to use this authoring tool, highly recommend checking out. Campfire Technologies. Link is going to be down in the description yep, below. You can sign up for a 10-day free trial with another 10 days money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Do 20 days. If in 20 days you haven't figured out if you want to use this or not, you're never going to figure it out. Go click that link. All right. So as we're diving into, into these monsters, there is a lot of information here to unpack. So we're obviously not going to read through, you know, every stat block and, and you know, have commentary on it. So we're just going to, you know, pick, pick different things that we want to talk about. And the first thing is this concept of the Nyx-born creatures. It's not really quite a template because it's not changing anything more than a, the visual aspect. Uh, but that in and of itself, I thought was something that was really cool and a really good talking. Well, it does give you another visual aspect and changes it that way. And then it lists like, you know, some changes for the origin. And then also there's some things where it's like, oh, here's an ability it has. Or, or actually it might even have a, a weakness. So, if, you know, God created the creature to serve as an emissary. The creature formed as a side effect of some other divine action. The creature escaped from the underworld. The creature took shape from the tales told about it. A god made the creature to serve as a pet or a mount. Or the creature took shape from the dreams or nightmares. So, like, those are those are starting options that, you know, you, you could have uh, if you want to list it as, a, as an origin. Uh, so then, you know, as Dave says, there are traits. So that there are some mechanical benefits that you can have in there, whether it be magic resistance, light sensitivity, immutable form, uh, you know, it is considered ma you know, to have magical weapons. It has a Nick step or a starlight form. So all pretty fun things, if you ask me. Just a little bit to, to switch it up, change it up uh, for those particular monsters. Uh, then we get the beast area. Monsters are listed by type on the chart, so it's really easy if you're looking for something specific. Um, as we mentioned, we're just doing a brief overview. If you want us to do specific monsters... And you want videos on them and ask us how we would use them or maybe if we would do what co monsters would we combine for a monster bff let us know in the comments below and we can circle back and take a look at those videos there are there are 10 classic monsters that they give uh you know how to use those monsters in theros uh so you've got the basilisk the catablepis the cyclops a dragon the kraken the lamia the medusa the Night Hag, the Sphinx, the Unicorn, you know, so all, all things of how those things would exist and, and work. And it tells you, you know, where, where those uh, creatures originally appeared. So, like, they're not all in the standard monster manual. So definitely some fun things, definitely some ways to, you know, grab creatures that fit in this world and make sure that you're portraying them properly. Yeah, sometimes it's just really minor things like Basilisks and Theros have four legs instead of six. Uh, but, you know, it's the little details like that. And it might throw your players off, too. Like, what is this lizard, right? And you, when you don't describe it with six legs, then your players that are used to playing the game and, and maybe have more experience, they're not going to automatically guess the basilisk now because it's missing those two legs. Absolutely. So diving into, you know, the, the actual new stat blocks, there's 23 new monster types, but over 60 stat blocks, you know, listed within within the book. So de definitely a, a lot of information there. So 
that definitely going to look in the Yeah, and we're ranging in challenge from an 8th all the way up to a 26th. So when we look at the different options that, that are in here, uh, there is an Anvil Rot Raptor, which uh, you know gives you another familiar option, which I thought was uh, definitely fun and worth noting. Yeah, it's def yeah, exactly. It's exactly that. We brought it up because, hey, what wizard doesn't want a new familiar option? And But not only that, it could be anybody's familiar because it has the special bar. If it just chooses it likes you, why not? Maybe you're playing an, iron, an uh, Anvil Rot character, right, for your supernatural gifts, and it feels an affinity towards you, or vice versa. Uh, and then, you know, uh, another interesting note is, you know, the Chimera, you know, in, in Theros, you know, you can have a randomized Chimera. You can roll through the chart and just go ahead and pick, you know, one of these, you know, fun things, uh, you know, either roll randomly or choose and design your Chimera the way you want I happen to know somebody else that did something with a randomized Chimera some time ago. So it's actually cool to see it show up in a D&D &D book. Yeah, so they give you a stat block for your Therian Chimera, but then you get a bunch of tables for customizing a Chimera. Uh, body composition, head attacks, breath weapons, and tail attacks. Each one of them is a die for. And, you know, you can mix and match. You can pick and choose, or you can roll randomly to see... What kind of crazy chimera you're going to come up in your campaign? So this is definitely an awesome, cool thing that I know that me and Ted are probably going to cherry pick for our own games. You know, not to mention also that familiar option I could definitely see getting cherry picked. If a player came to me and we weren't playing Theros and they're like, hey, can I have this thing? I'd be like, yeah, the, the Anvil Raw Raptor is pretty cool. Why not? You can have it, especially if they're playing a warlock, right? A pack of chains warlock, and they wanted a different kind of familiar. That'd be super cool. All right. So next up is the uh, the the eidolons, and I'm hope, hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, so it's basically a new type of undead, and the cool thing about it is it's got listed as any alignment. So if you're looking to have some good undead in your world, here's an absolutely way to 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 make that happen. You can absolutely do it. There's also at least one other undead entry in the book that's not evil maybe even good as well so uh for you folks that want to have necromancers and use undead but the you're not evil uh there's some good options so there's some happy uh cheerful pleasant undead in here and you know we had just uh you know did a a video the other day talking about magic items and there's something else that kind of you know resembles a magic item in this book that's not in that section you want to get into that one dave yeah the next fleece rams are so cool like these there's herds of these probably guarded by guardians of some sort because when you sh when you uh shear them there's another table there's another die six of different things protection power of nyx calming presence trail of flowers animal infinity abundance of food so that's just what's listed here, right? But when I see something like this, I'm like, this this screams plot hook, uh, story arc, maybe even campaign. Who knows? But here's the thing. If you kill the ram, the fleece is no good. So you have to shear it from them living. So for me, this is this is really cool because, one, you have to overcome the guardians, whether that means defeating them, killing them, negotiating, proving you're worthy, whatever that is right there like that could be a whole little adventure in itself and then the other part is actually being able to shear them without harming them that part's very important so this could be a skill challenge That's this could it could be a social interaction this could be exploration so it's a cool monster that you can add into your game but it's not necessarily something that has to be fought or killed yeah and, and in fact you know, as you said it can't be killed because if you kill it you know, the, the, the power of the fleece goes away. Uh, I love when, you know, they incorporate ideas that is like, huh, this is inspiring. This is, you know, campaign session or encounter of Aking that's not just a, here's a stat block to fight. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I know combat is an important part of this game and we like to see it happen. But when a, a monster stat block gives you ideas for how to make this be useful as a non-combat thing, you know, it gets the, the cogs turning, it gets the wheels moving. And, you know, it's like, all right, I like this. Give me more. Absolutely. So the last thing would be mythic monsters because it's a new thing that's entered in uh, a, a new thing that's been created in this book that has entered the game. But we're going to save that for its very own video. 
If you want to learn more about Mythic Odysseys of Thuros, then check out the video we did on magic items and artifacts up here. Are you looking for more D&D products for your home game? Then you might want to support us over on Patreon. Over there, we're creating new products for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons that both players and DMs alike can drop right into their game. But wait, there's more! We also do weekly patron-only live chats, monthly giveaways that our patrons are automatically entered in, and more. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.